At noon, ship A is 150 kilometers west of ship B. Ship A is sailing east at 35 kilometers per hour, and ship B is sailing north at 25 kilometers per hour. How fast is the distance between the ships changing at 4 p.m.? So this is a pretty dense problem. There's a lot of information here. So I think I'm going to start with a couple of different pictures to try to understand what's happening in this scenario. So let me start with a, a picture of what's happening at noon. So it says ship A is 150 kilometers west of ship B. So I better keep track of my directions. North, east, south, and west. So ship A is 150 kilometers west of ship B. So essentially I'm looking at ship A starting here. This is 150 kilometers west of ship B. So ship B is starting there. And then once these ships start moving, I'm going to draw a second diagram to indicate the motion. So it says that ship A is sailing east. So I'll indicate direction of travel with some arrows here. And again, this first point was the start, the starting point for ship A. And then I'm going to continue this so I can see the 150 kilometers away where ship B starts. So this is basically the start point for ship B. And it says ship B is sailing north. So I'll draw some arrows to indicate direction of travel for ship B. So we want to think about what's changing in this problem and what remains constant. The only constant I can see is that the ships begin 150 kilometers apart. But as they start moving, the distance that they're traveling is going to change. So for example, over time, if I look at where ship A may be at any given time, let's say ship A right now is right here, then the distance that ship A has traveled, it's started over here and it's traveled this distance and that distance is getting larger, so I'm gonna give that distance a variable name. I'll just use X. So X is the distance that ship A has traveled. But now as ship B begins to move north, ship B's distance is also changing. Here we go. Ship B's distance is also changing as it travels north. So if ship B stops at any given time, let's say it's right here, then its distance from its starting point is getting larger. And that's also changing, so I'll give this distance a variable name, and I'll use y. So y would be the distance that ship A travels, excuse me, <laughs> ship B travels. So those two quantities are changing. And now, do we know how fast those quantities are changing? We have to read the problem yet again. So it says that ship A is sailing east at 35 kilometers per hour. So that's a rate. Therefore, that's the rate at which ship A is sailing east. So that would be dx over dt, the rate at which x is changing, since x is the distance that ship A has traveled. So that's going to be 35 kilometers per hour. And then we read that ship B is sailing at 25 kilometers per hour. So that would be the rate at which Y is changing. So dy over dt would equal 25 kilometers per hour. And now what we're asked to find, finally, is how fast, so we're looking for a rate, how fast the distance between the ships is changing. So we need to draw in the distance between these ships. That distance is also changing, so that's a third quantity changing. So I'm just going to call that Z. 
And so this is what we're trying to find. Ultimately, we're looking at finding dz over dt. And we're looking for that rate at 4 p.m. So this is a pretty complicated setup. Again, I recommend drawing several pictures. Sometimes it's good to look at the diagram at the beginning. And then kind of what I have here, you might call this like a general diagram. In general, as the ships start moving, this is what my diagram is going to look like. So next I need to find a, an equation that relates our variables. And right now we have three variables. And you'll notice that I do have a right triangle here. I just don't have the base of this right triangle labeled. However, if I look above, I notice that the original distance between the ships before they began moving was 150 kilometers. So if I were to go ahead and put that on this diagram, that would be this horizontal distance here is 150. Therefore, if the ship A has traveled a distance of X, then I could label that triangle, the base of the triangle, as 150 minus X. So now I have a right triangle with all three sides labeled. Therefore, I could use the Pythagorean theorem to relate these quantities. This gives us the quantity 150 minus X squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. Now, it's a good idea to pause here and decide whether we want to keep all of these variables, x, y, and z. So if I go back to my original setup, it's helpful to notice that I have quite a bit of information about all three of these variables. Meaning, I have dx dt, the rate at which x is changing, I have dy dt, and I'm looking for dz dt. Therefore, I'm going to keep all three of these variables because I have two of the rates and I'm looking for the third rate. So we're ready to take the derivative with respect to time. Now, you need to notice that the first portion here is a composite function, so we're going to use the chain rule. So once we take the derivative with respect to time, first it's actually the power rule with the 2 coming in front. Then we have the quantity 150 minus x. When we subtract 1 from our exponent, that will really leave this to the first power, but of course we don't write that. And then the chain rule says we're going to chain on the derivative of the inner function, 150 minus x. The derivative of 150 is 0. And then the derivative of negative x, and remember we're taking the derivative with respect to time, so that would be negative dx over dt. Remember, this is called implicit differentiation. That's the technique we're using. Plus the derivative of y squared with respect to time, which will be 2y, and then we chain on dy dt, and that will be equal to 2z, times dz over dt. And now we're ready to substitute in some of the values that we know. Now we were interested in looking at this rate at 4 p.m. So we do need to think about our original diagram. So let me go back. Remember that these ships were starting at noon, 150 kilometers apart. So we need to do some computation to figure out, see if I can fit it over here, to figure out how far these ships have traveled. So if they started at noon and it is now four o'clock, we know that they've traveled for a total of four hours. And it said that ship A was traveling 35 kilometers per hour. So we're gonna multiply the time and the rate, so 35 kilometers per hour, and we're multiplying that by four. So that's gonna give us a total distance of 140 kilometers. So if I look at my diagram here, that's the value of X, that's right here, that's how far ship A has traveled, 140 kilometers. And we'll do the same thing for ship B. So again, four hours, 
but this time ship B is traveling a little slower, 25 kilometers per hour. So we'll multiply that time by that rate. Uh, so we end up with an answer in kilometers, which is 100 kilometers. So back on my diagram, that's how far ship B has traveled north. So that's 100. So remembering that the distance between the two ships in the beginning was 150, now I can take a look at the base of this triangle and I can label it for what's happening right now at 4 o'clock. So if the original distance between the two was 150, but ship A has traveled 140, then that leaves 10 kilometers here. Basically, ship A is 10 kilometers away from where ship B started. So I have a little uh, right triangle here, and I need to do Pythagorean theorem to figure out the value of Z at 4 p.m. So I am out of room. Let me go to my next page. Pythagorean theorem would be 10 squared plus 100 squared is equal to z squared. And again, this is finding the value of z at 4 p.m. How far apart are these ships at 4 p.m.? That's what we're finding. So we'll go ahead and add the, those two together and take the square root of both sides. And we find that z is the square root of 10,100. And I'm going to leave it in this exact form since that would be a decimal and I don't want to round multiple times in the problem. So going back, I think we have all of the values we can substitute in here to our derivative. So 2 times 150 minus x. Remember, x was the distance that ship A had traveled, and so that was 140. Times negative dx dt. Looking back at my original problem, dx dt was 35 kilometers per hour. That was how fast ship A was traveling. Plus 2 times y. In this case, at 4 p.m., y is 100. Times dy dt. And remember, dy dt was how fast ship B was traveling, which is 25. And I'm out of room here, sorry, so I'm going to go down below. That's going to equal 2 times z, which we just calculated to be the square root of 10,100, times dz over dt, which is what we're looking for, the rate at which the ships are separating. So everything on the left-hand side of this equation can be uh, multiplied and, and added and computed. So go ahead and do that. Remember, pause the video at any time so that you can be doing these computations on your own. But I believe that's going to give us 4,300. So 4,300 is equal to 2 times the square root of 10,100 dz dt. So once we divide, dz dt will equal 4,300 divided by 2 times the square root of 10,100. Which I'm not going to bother simplifying right now. I'm just going to go to my calculator and get a decimal approximation. And it looks like that is about 21.39. So all that remains is to attach the appropriate units. Remember that this is the rate at which z is changing, and z is the distance between these two uh, ships, and that distance was measured in kilometers. So this would be kilometers per hour in this case, 21.39 kilometers per hour. So my final answer written as a sentence would be that at 4 p.m., the distance between the ships is increasing at a rate of 21.39 kilometers per hour. And notice that I know that the distance is increasing because I ended up computing a positive rate. So a positive rate of change indicates that the distance between the ships is getting larger.